Well, if I can't fix this, maybe AMD is more expensive. You see, two months ago, I traded my NVIDIA GPU for an AMD card. I saved about $300 and fixed quite a few problems, but caused others. Stuff like excessive idle power draw, major visual differences in game. Stuff that we're going to try and fix today with the help from you, actually. We read through and organized all of your comments from the first video. Some of them were a little bit mean. I'm distracted by the 90s tribal tat. It's been a minute since I've seen one of those in the wild. One reply. It's okay, he prefers things that were popular in the past, like, like rasterization. That was actually pretty good. And some of them were great suggestions. So we're going to cover what NVIDIA bugs AMD have fixed and what bugs they have caused. And with the collective help from the internet, either get these issues resolved or potentially regret my decision for going with AMD. Let's find out. Are you an enthusiast looking for cheaper components or a better price for what you want to sell? Then you need to check out Jawa. Jawa is the community-driven marketplace quickly becoming the ultimate destination for PC hardware, from entire builds to GPUs, components, and accessories. With Jawa, you buy and sell from a community of gamers just like you, and you get to keep more of your money compared to eBay. But that's not all. If money ASAP and minimal hassle is exactly what you are after, Jawa will even buy your graphics card from you directly. And as part of their community-driven ethos, they have done a great job collaborating with respected tech YouTubers to highlight some of the best options for the holidays. There is a lot to love, so why wait? Make your next upgrade more affordable by clicking on the Jawa sponsor link below. So the main reason I see for going for an AMD GPU is you typically get more gaming performance for less money. That's pretty well known for most gamers. But many of you were quick to point out that in my situation, that surprisingly isn't the case. But how does that work? How have I saved $300 by going for AMD, yet it's still more costly than if I got a more expensive Nvidia card? Let me show you how this is possible. This right here. In the first video, one of the things that we tested was idle power draw, and the AMD card sucked back about three times more electricity while doing, well, nearly nothing. Something was obviously wrong. I worked that out to be around $50 to $70 more in electricity cost per year, but could go much higher than that, depending on where you live. This really should not be happening. And most people in the comment section with similar cards were reporting more like 10 watts at idle, which is much closer to what I was getting with my Nvidia card. So if we can't fix this abnormally high power draw issue, the argument that AMD could cost more in the long run is valid, at least in my situation right now, even if it would take many years of the computer idling. But there's a few things that we can try. Let me show you. And the first thing that I wanted to do was to update the drivers. There has been a new driver released and I wanted to give AMD at least the, the opportunity to be able to fix it in a driver update. So new drivers equates to, in the total board power, nearly 80 watts. If anything, that's slightly higher. So having confirmed that AMD haven't fixed this yet for my card, it was time to test some of your suggestions. And what an interesting suggestion enabling FreeSync from Megadoom. I can really see the logic there. FreeSync didn't seem to make a difference at all. We're still talking mid 70s, high 70s, and enabling them was exactly the same. But one of the most popular suggestions was lowering the refresh rate of the monitors while not gaming. I'd personally hate to have to change this every single time I game, but let's see if it even works by setting all three screens to 60 Hertz. Which makes things even more interesting given that we're still hovering around 75, 78 watts. So what we're going to have to do now is start disconnecting some of the displays, which was pretty much the joint top suggestion from you guys, as well as the refresh rate adjustment. So let's see what happens if you're not running a triple monitor setup. And then we're going to disconnect this display. How did that change things? Wow. We just dropped down to 42 watts. That's almost half. Disconnect this display, keep changes. 33 watts. Still better. Now we are getting somewhere. Every new display attached seems to cause a big jump in idle power draw. So well done to everyone that suggested that. However, we still aren't in the 10 watt range that I would expect. But then something occurred to me that nobody suggested. Does it have something to do with using two different resolutions? What if that was the issue? This is probably gonna be a whole boatload of sketchiness, so please bear with me. Here we go. We now have 
three 1440p monitors connected. So if we disconnect this display, we go from 80 to high 40s. If we disconnect this display, oh, we have gone down to the 20s, 19, 16, 13. So at least in my setup, enabling system-wide FreeSync really didn't do anything. Increasing, decreasing, or matching the refresh rate did have an impact on idle power drop, but was relatively minor compared to matching the resolution and reducing the quantity of displays. The lower, the better. But there's a couple things I do need to highlight. This does seem more common on AMD, but really isn't an AMD only issue. A simple Google search would show plenty of cases for both manufacturers. Nevertheless, the argument of AMD costing me more in the long run has some merit, but how do we go about quantifying that? You know me, I love numbers and logic, so at what point does this bug make AMD more expensive than the Nvidia card I swapped from? Well, in a worst case scenario, if my computer did nothing but idle, it would take over four years for my total cost to match the cost of the NVIDIA GPU. But to be fair to AMD, within those four years, something would have changed that calculation. Either one or all of my monitor's backlights might have died from the NVIDIA bug that I was trying to fix, and that would give me another four years to a decade of inflated electricity costs to play with, or the bug will hopefully be resolved, and I'll update you if and when that does. But like I said in the first video, I am not here to gloss over any AMD issues. I'm here to share my experience, and this is what I'm currently facing. But to be fair to AMD, as we have been with Nvidia, there's one more thing that we're going to do later that could fix this whole idle power draw situation completely, and should bring our costs right down. Speaking about weird things swapping from Nvidia, one of the things we compared in the first video was the major color differences observed between AMD and Nvidia. In every one of my video files, the Nvidia card looked more saturated, but lost a lot of detail in the high and the low lights, to the point where a five-story sign was barely legible in the day, compared to AMD. And this created quite the whirlwind of suggestions from you guys, from how AMD and Nvidia encode video differently, which is irrelevant on an external recorder, but we will look into that in the future, to Nvidia compressing the video to boost FPS and crush AMD through shady tactics. I mean, maybe, but that sounds very AMD fanboyish without at least a little bit of evidence to back it up. And I am intentionally avoiding overly passionate negative comments without evidence. That's a fanboy red flag to me, and I'm trying my best to be objective throughout. Which is exactly why the first video was showing the initial differences which required me to swap, then test. There is no other steps involved in that, because if I swapped, changed a bunch of stuff, and then went, look, Nvidia much better, you can barely even see AMD graphics, that is not a fair comparison. That's manipulation. But that doesn't mean that investigating these differences isn't useful in understanding how best to correct for them. Because out of all the comments, the one that was most upvoted was only a band-aid to the problem. It is true that you can adjust the colors to get a look that you prefer, but what you are essentially doing is manipulating the input to get a desired output. That isn't resolving the problem, that's circumventing or avoiding it. And I don't want to manipulate anything. I want Nvidia and AMD to do that for me so that I can compare and show you the differences in how they handle it. Which brings us back to the color difference. I tested all of your comments, and the one that got the two cards closest to each other was editing the RGB color range. This can be set in the Nvidia control panel and here in the AMD Adrenaline software. Having the range set to limited can be great depending on the content and the display, but for most PC users, you'll likely want to set this to full range. It doesn't perfectly match the visuals for the two cards. AMD is a little clearer still, but this is testing side by side at a ridiculous bit rate on an OLED screen. Essentially, now that we've adjusted the settings, you likely won't notice a difference between the two. But at default, there clearly was a difference in visual output based on how Nvidia and AMD handled their default configuration in my system. So where does that leave AMD now? What bugs have they fixed and what bugs have they caused? Well, from the first video, AMD fixed the fact that my monitors would refuse to sleep. This was a big issue for me, and I'm happy to report that it is still fixed. They also fixed the issue with gaming on my TV upstairs. As soon as the NVIDIA drivers kicked in, the output just would completely sh 
correct itself, which hasn't been an issue for AMD. But an update on one of the AMD issues that cropped up in the first video is that my camera or capture card just stopped working. It stopped working completely after I swapped from Nvidia, and I'm happy to report that it resolved itself, as well as accessing the GPU power sensors within the cart, both of these likely from a driver update. And the visual differences, they are now mostly corrected for, with a simple configuration change. But the thing that's still persisting is the abnormally high power draw. Though I mentioned earlier, we might have something that can fix that. And not only is it something that I would recommend if you plan to do a swap like this, it's something I tend to do about every 18 months regardless for proper maintenance. So let's see what difference a fresh install makes and get a new copy of Windows 11 on that machine. But we're going to do this on a brand new SSD so that I can revert back to that one and have exactly the same setup as I currently do in case I need to test anything else. Yeah, it's made no difference at all. Still pretty much exactly the same, one, two, and three screens. So we are still suffering from the idle power draw issue. Oh, and an update on Luna, she is doing wonderfully. She is such a cute girl. Oh, you want down? Okay, you can go down. Do you wanna say hello to everyone? She actually had a health scare just after the last video and before Thanksgiving, but she's back to loving life, loving food, and her favorite crinkle toys. But to fully understand the AMD swap, check out the original video where I cover my main issues and finally swap to AMD. And you can check that out by clicking here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated. And I honestly hope you have a wonderful time over the holidays. I'll see you soon.